It's hump day, and this is what I've got going on. And I'm only going to tell you what I've got going on, because that's all I know. Right at this present point, I've got body fill on the door. I've got body fill on the face of the door. I've got body fill on the face of the, the sill here. I've got it around the window. And what I have done is... I have fiberglass the top. The last video that we done, the top is fiberglass, just like that one. That's all it's on. It's fiberglass. But what I have done is I've come in and knocked off all the little boogies. And boogies, what I mean is the little rough spots that you can't smooth over nice. I roughed it off with that really quick. And then what I did is I went over and mixed filler, and I put it on the roof, and I put it on the door. <clears throat> all the way around, as you can see. And what has happened is, is I, what, I, what I call that, or what I'm trying, how I'm going to try to explain it is, is I've flooded the area where the door is. And the reason I flooded it, because I want it to fit the best I can. So, when I say flooded it, this is what I'm saying. When we have water here in Nova Scotia, and when the water is at full tide, high tide, you do not see anything but water. When the tide goes down, that's when you see rocks and stuff that's out of place and different colors and that sort of thing. So what has happened is, if you can picture it, the metal, the metal is the ocean floor and I have just flooded it with body fill. And I've flooded it because, so when I sand it down, I can stop when I see the ocean floor. And the ocean floor is the metal. So if you want to come on over close, come over to get close here. Like, you can see what the difference is. There's fiberglass, and that's auto body filler. What has happened is I've hit metal there, so I know that's the floor of the ocean. I don't want to go any further than that because I'll start seeing things. As soon as you see anything like that, look, i got a little piece of metal going on there. That's the ocean floor. Right? I got a little metal going on um, right here. That's the ocean floor. I got a little metal going on the bottom of the door. I got a little metal up here at the corner of the door. I got some metal up here. I got some metal showing here. And so what I'm saying is that I had, I, this is what I'm saying is to get the show car finish, if you're building a car like I am, or any car really, if you want it to be perfect, like, like you think show cars are, 99% of them have been flooded with high build primer, urethane putty, or whatever, polyester putty, or Bondo. They have been flooded, the whole car has been flooded with that to make the car perfect. So you can sand it together. And what I have done is, is I've body filled it all, and then I've run over top it with this. Now it's a 40 grit, uh, DA, 8 inch, and I've gone over the whole thing with this. I keep it flat at all times, unless it's round, round areas, and then you round it like you would a block. I use this j thing just like as I've, I would use a block. And then you crisscross it to cross your, cross your grain, make it sand faster. When I do the door, I'll go this way, then I go this way. I can get it straight like that, and that's the way I like to do it. But as I flooded it, I had to make sure that I was watching out for the floor of the ocean because I, once you go past that, you start seeing things. Now I've got the door fitting the car. When you look at it this way, the door fits nice. The door fits nice there. The door fits there, nice there. It fits nice everywhere. The, car has, the door has been flooded. It's not finished because I have all kinds of filler that's going in around the door. And I'm going to show you how to make a body line, or not a body line, a door gap easily. I've got, there's like, I mean, to sand that and take some of those, I'll show you how to do that easily. But this is how, this is how you flood out something and make it look right. Um, it's done on 99% of the show cars, and some people can handle it, and some people cannot. But it's the truth, and I only want to tell you the, the truth. And I want to show, tell you an example. Like what happens is when I set the door on, I set the door on so the metal is hot. I set it out as far as I can. 
When I set it out as far as I can, that means that most of the filler will be going on the, the automobile around the door. And that makes the door have less filler on it. You can't tell on this door because it's a, it's a thick door. It's square all the way around. But on the, on the doors on the 40 Plymouth, they've got a small, a skinny little edge on them. What you do is you make sure you bring that out all the way so you don't try to get the mud on the door. So you flood the car. So you make that where the mud is because you can't tell. So I've set the door out as far as I can, and then I've flooded it. So I've set the ocean floor out as far as I can to put less filler on the door as possible. And the reason I have filler all over the door is because I flooded it, and I'm, I'm, I'm right here on the metal. And to make this look perfect all the way around, that's what I had to do, or that's what I have done. As you can see is the fiberglass, you can see little bits of fiberglass. So you know, or I know, that it's not that thick. So also, when I look at you and I say it takes what it takes, when the water comes in and floods the minus basin, how much water it takes to come in to flood it is what it takes. Same as the car. Wouldn't matter, this is there's another thing I'm going to tell you. It wouldn't matter if I put one quart on it, if I put 15 gallons on it. When I sand it off, I stop when I see the ocean floor. So that means <laughs> it only takes what it takes. It does not matter what you put on the car. It only takes what it takes. When you hit the ocean floor, it's over. <laughs> That's the highest spot. We do not want to go any further because we start to see stuff on the ocean floor because it's not high tide. That's like a clam. They're happy in high water because you cannot see them in the ground. They're happy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to mix up some filler. Well, I've actually, this is, this is where we left off yesterday. I put some filler in here, shot a little Botox in my face right there in that one spot. It had to crack, right? And the rest of it, I just want to come in and smooth it off and just, you know, make sure that it's, you know, it's secure. It's not going to do anything. It's all been welded. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the 40 grit on the 8 inch and I'm going to come in and knock these heads off of this. I'm going to scratch all this because that's what has to be done. And then I'm going to flood it. with fill. I will sand it together so it fits perfectly. Remember, this is a handmade car, <laughs> right? Handmade. I'm not, a, I'm not, I didn't come out and punch it out and fist and put it on the car and turn the bolts on and fit. No, it's handmade. So as I do this, I will flood it out. And it does not matter if I put 10 gallons on or if I put one gallon on. It takes what it takes because the ocean floor will let me know that that's it. Hope I explain that good, but it takes what it takes. Anyways, I'm going to knock that off and show you what show you what I mean. That was a hard video to get out, you know. It's hard to explain to somebody. You got to stop when you hit metal. Well, that was the easiest way I could think. Like as soon as you hit the metal anywhere, you got to stop because that is the ocean floor and you do not want to see. The clams do not want to come out to be, to be harvested. I have to turn that on. Sorry about that. So that's how the doors will be fit, made to fit right on the money. That's how I do it. And I'm going to show you as I do it. And do the best job I can like I always. And I'm just knocking this off. The exact same way is I knock the body filler off. When I hit metal, 
I stop. <laughs> it's the ocean floor. It's the but. It's the end. When 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 you see something, you think, "Oh man, that don't look good." They probably haven't got no body filler in the right spot. That's probably the, the problem, you know. No body filler. Everybody talks bad about Phil, but I like Phil. Man, I like Phil. There's the ocean floor. And it's not on there that thick, so I don't, I don't, not, I don't mind it. That's why we want to get the, the metal work the best we can. Here's another instance, too, when you see, you know, oh, there's some metal, it's a high spot. You're going to beat down here. Well, you're going to beat down the next spot you find, <laughs> right? You know, beat it all in, you know. There has to be an end to the means. Now, that is ready for filler. I've got it knocked down. I've hit the, I've hit the, the ocean floor, and that's it. So now I'm going to go to this. That there is polished. That's for pictures. This is for what we're doing. This has got a 40 grit on it. And what it's doing, I'm just scratching it. So when you rub your hands across it, it feels scratched. Exact same thing Jolene does when she puts her nails on. And she can tell you when you sand them. You don't want to get them caught because she's ripped them off. Hey, baby, still getting over it. Huh? She fell trying to get that MGA out and ripped her fingernail off because she had a... Did a good job of the nails, though. that off and I'm gonna say that I'm ready for some auto body filler I'm ready for some auto body filler in the way that I'll do this it, it is a it is a, a, a big job but you know what that's that's what we do right that's what we do that's what we do There's a big discussion. There, Jolene, the, the epoxy comes up a lot. For me, for just for me, epoxy is for priming, not sanding, and painting 20 minutes later. That epoxy isn't good for another thing. Epoxy is good for value shading. If you have a car that's different colors, when you go in to spray it, you epoxy it. You, have, you value shade, you made it one color, and then you go and spray your color on top because you do not have to sand it. That's what epoxy is for. Epoxy is not for, well, epoxy is for whatever you want it to be before. But epoxy is for, if I want to go in and paint something, I can go in and spray it with epoxy, put a coat on it, I don't have to sand it, and then I come back in 20 minutes later and I paint it. That's what epoxy is for. Or making it one color, don't have to sand it, then you start painting it. If you ever paint any candies, you would want to lay a coat of epoxy on that car so it's one color. Um, and anybody that sprays that, you know, all they spray thin paint, um, you have to know that it has to be one color. And that, that epoxy is good for that because you don't have to sand it. She's right on today, you know, baby. Cousins make dozens, relations make nations.
heard the dog barking. I'll get the filler going. How's that? So I got some filler here. And what I do, I got a, a kind of a small board going on here. I would sometimes I put a lot more on, but this is the board I've got. This is the board I'm using, so I just go with that. I do not I do not take care of my boards. I do not take care of my paddles. I do not do that. Um, generally, uh, we go at it, we do our thing, we throw the paddles away and get new ones. I think they're three bucks or something like that. So I, I try, I, all that stuff I use as throw away, paint guns I throw away, paddles I throw away, boards I throw away. Too much time for me, for me, is spent cleaning that stuff. And <laughs> I've had people say I've had that board for 20 years. I said, wow, you clean that board that many times? <laughs> Whew. Wow. No, just throw it out. Get another piece of metal. Another piece of metal that's going to the garbage, you know. And if I have that mixed on there, I've got a lot of, well, it looks like a lot of filler there. But what I'm going to say is, this is what I'm going to say. The ocean, to be flood, to, to flood the world with the ocean it'll only take as much water as it takes. <laughs> Simple as that. Isn't that right, baby? Like, you know, as, as the ocean floor is king on this car, which is the metal, for me to flood that out and just touch metal here and there, it'll take what it takes. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't mind that because it's reality. And reality does not hurt me at all. <laughs> reality. Well, I shouldn't say it hurt me. Sometimes I don't like dealing with it, but... <laughs> huh? Sometimes I don't like dealing with it. What I'm trying to do is build that filler up there so it feathers out. I can sand it with the roof. That's what I'm trying to do. And it's the worst thing, you know. And you get that old little spot like that that gets in your filler. And it's just a nib off the old fiberglass. That's all it is, a nib off the fiberglass. Now, generally, this takes me two times. I have to flood it twice. I'll flood it once with fill. Then I will sand it all off together. Whatever low spots I have, what I mean by, what I mean by low spots is is where I'm hitting metal, where I'm hitting the ocean floor, and there's no dirt beside it. <laughs> I have to fill it in with more filler so I can flood it. You know, it's almost like, um, yeah, you have to fill the mud puddle so it floods out so you can't see the rocks at the bottom. So I will know that when I sand this, because you'll see where it's not sanded. You'll know where the mud puddles are. As I put filler on the door, we must remember that the door has been welded all the way around once, twice, three, four, you know, a bunch of times. And uh, that's why I'm flooding it out to make it what it should be. So I'm going to go back and get some more filler, continue on with the door. You can keep watching, baby and show them how, how I do it. Let's come back over here, grab a rag, take this little bit of filler here and put in maybe some pinholes or something and find some. I'm gonna have to get the door off to get that back post. The door's gonna have to come off, but I wanna finish the door before I take it off. So, this is the process. Put it on, sand it off. That's the process. So I'm just flooding the area with mud. It doesn't matter how much I put on. I'd rather pay $20 for that and then pay $50 for a tiny little can. <laughs> you know, that's why I use body fill. I don't use the putty. I don't use the putty. That's what my primer's for. 
I will sand the mud, this stuff, with a 40 grit and an 80 grit. Then it's off to primer. Then it's off to primer. No putty. Don't use that stuff. Don't use that stuff. And I've just learned not to. I'm not saying it's not the right way. I'm just saying I don't use it because I don't use it. <laughs> I don't use it. And right now, I'm just trying to get the mud on the door. I'm not giving a shit about the, the, the gaps right now. I'll get them later. And what happens is I'm trying to get this door flooded out. And then I can do that gap and then come over and work on this one, go back and forth to get them both done a little quicker. See? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I just want the door. I just want the door. This filler on this door is going to be so minute, but I wouldn't dare paint it without it. I wouldn't dare paint it without it. Ah, I want more mud. Should have had a bigger, bigger thing. Get some more going, man. <sighs> also, this this um this primer that I use. The name of it is Feather Fill. It's Feather Fill. I'll show you sometime. I have it out here. Don't have it out here right now. But I find that the body fill and the the body fill, I find feathers nicer over top of the, the primer than it does on the metal. That primer there, and let's face it, we but we filled it first, then primed it, but it's a polyester primer, so there's no reason why a polyester body fill or filler or fiberglass wouldn't stick to it. Um, I've heard a lot of people say they prime their card. Well, you, you, can't, you can't body fill over top of lacquer or primer. It'll fall off. <laughs> It'll fall off. That's why I'm using this stuff. Oh, Jesus. That's why she's drying good on me. Huh? A little more on the bottle. The reason I'm mixing lots up and putting lots on is the exact same reason is why we weld the way we do sometimes. If I do not flood that out with enough product, there's no possible way that I'm going to fill all the crevices in the ocean <laughs> without having it. And it'll only have what it's need because we're only going to sand down to the highest point. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. That's like saying, what, what's heavier? A ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? What's heavier? Well, it takes, it is what it is. It is what it is. And this is, you know, this is this is not for every application. This is this is for what I'm doing here at the present moment. If you had a dent to fill, that's a different story than what I'm doing. I'm I'm building a car from nothing. I am taking and making something and making everything fit the way it should in a re in a short amount of time. There's a big difference between bolting on a panel and fixing a dent. No, you wouldn't flood the fender out. You'd fix the dent. Let's uh keep everything in perspective if you know what I'm trying to tell you. You got to keep things in perspective if you know what I'm trying to tell you. This is a different application 
for a different thing. I am building a car. I am building a car from nothing. And I am flooding out the door to make it fit the best it can fit. If you were building a show car, you would be doing the exact same thing. You would flood it out to make it fit the best it would fit. Guaranteed. That's what you do. You can see how I'm starting to put body fill on the other side, on the, on the post in front of the door here. I'm starting to put body fill on here. That means when I come to sand together, when I sand it together with the, with the DA, when I start hitting metal anywhere is there, I stop. I have flooded it, and that's the highest area. I don't want to see anything. I want it to be perfect. And that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for. I learned this from a man that used to work with me. He's passed now. God bless his soul. Rest in peace. But he came here and he showed me. He, he, he did that. And, he, and, you know, a big thing went off in my head. Once you know, once you know the process, there's no guessing anymore. You just go do it. Right? Once you know the process, there's no guessing anymore. You just go do it. So generally, when I'm filling something out or if I'm trying to make something fit or whatever I will come over and flood it out and, and, and sand it off real quick because I know what has to be done generally um, it's two different things what sort of what I'm doing here I'm building a car and repairing a car is a different thing but if you're into this customizing stuff and you want your car to look like it's never been touched or anything like that it must be flooded with filler to make all the body panels fit perfectly right. And the, and the metal is your ocean floor. And the ocean floor is not what you're going for. <laughs> you're going for perfection. And we do not want to see barnacles and that sort of stuff because that's the way it is. That's what we do. hope everybody got that. It's a hard thing to explain, you know. To me, it took me a long time to comprehend that. You can't go past the metal. You can't go past the metal. And every time you'd burn to the metal, you'd run right to the metal just as fast as you could and try to put as less fill in it as possible because, you know, you're always thinking, oh, you can't use fill. You, know, you can't put fill. Put the Bondo to it or the filler or the primer or whatever you got, and it'll only be what it's got to be to get your project done. So do not fret. Oh, it's putting a lot of... Listen, that's what you have to do to get it done. Go for it. That's what I do. I, I didn't... This might be a... I'm not sure, but... One of my best videos yet because it's nothing but pure honesty. You have to flood the car out to, to, to make it something. And... and Everybody needs to know that's building their old car, that's worried about a little bit of Bondo. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> that right? Huh? Put the Bondo to you, sand it off, and make you look nice. For right, I will. For Jolene, I do just about anything. Huh? I told her I'd drink her bath water one time, didn't I, baby? Huh? Drink your bath water. Now, as I put all this filler on here, I'm going to explain it again. <laughs> when I sand that off, there was metal right there. I will sand it off again until there's metal there, but I will make sure the rest of the ocean is, is flooded off so there's no, no bad spot showing. If I can get that...
body fill all look in one color and get it sanded off that metal showing that tells you you've got it flushed off pretty good especially if you're using the DA the way you should be you know holding it flat anybody that says oh they don't do body work with a DA well then they're missing out because they've never tried to hold it flat and use it like a block um, when you hold it flat and use it like a block it works like a block it's just a DA That's what my uncle used to say, Freddie Curry. He's the local DA, and that's not Stanford District Attorney neither. <laughs> it doesn't stand for District Attorney. I would say, what they used to say, what's that stand for, Fred? It doesn't stand for District Attorney. <laughs> I had a friend stop in today, a new friend. He's an older gentleman. And uh, he came in with all kinds of smiles on me. and made my day, you know. He was just as chipper and... Christ, he was chipper, I was chipper. It's good. Had a good little meeting with him. It's good. We're going to Saturday, we're going to take off and we're going to go look for Jolene's engine. It's been done. I guess you can guess who was here. Doug was here. Um, it's all running, he says. It's running on the stand. He wants us to come listen to it. Kind of excited that. Jolene's excited for that. She wants to go down. Um, we're going to go to the wood guys, I think. And we were talking to him last time about the wood. We're going to go visit him. And there's a couple other people that Doug Brank that have another, some other different cars. And we want to go see them. So that's what we're going to do Saturday. And we'll take you with us. Or Jolene will make a little video, probably. Uh, make a little video. Because that's what we're doing. Um, as we make these daily videos, all that goes on is daily stuff. And I will tell you nothing less or nothing more. <laughs> all right baby i don't know if they can handle any more or not but i'm just going to keep putting mud I, they can keep watching me if you want to i'm going to keep putting mud i got this pair here yeah you might as well wait up at one more on to show what i'm doing huh? i'm kind of fast get the camera moving frogs or is that the stance <laughs> that's a stance so I'm just flushing off the outside Right now, that's what I'm doing, just flushing off the outside. I'm flooding the outside. I'm going to go to the highest part of the ocean, and I'm going to let off because I want, the I want the water just as smooth as glass. I don't want to see anything from the bottom of the ocean appearing, if you know what I'm trying to say. No Loch Ness Monsters. No Loch Ness Monsters. Put a little more right here. They won't show you this stuff on TV. It's too dangerous. <laughs> really, baby? Huh? Too dangerous. You want to show them that? If I didn't show you, who would? Think about it that way. If I didn't show you, who would? You can look at it that way. I'll be like Houdini. I'll have somebody wanting to shoot me because I tell the truth. <laughs> Don't tell them we got mud in the car! Isn't that why he died? He was ratting out the mediums. Something like that. Now, that's my first start 
of, of flooding the door and the quarter, flooding the car. That's my first start. So what I'll do is I'll come in with my DA, 40 grit. I will sand it together like a block, like I would do a block. That means the door will fit perfectly to the sill with this part and the roof. When I sand it off, there will still be, I will still see like low spots where the mud puddles are not full of water. I will still see them areas where it's not sanded. You'll see that. Then I'll have to come in. I will flood it all again. But just before I flood it again, I will, I will only put the, the filler in the mud puddles before I start. So I'll come over. After I sand this all off and I see all the mud puddles where it hasn't got enough water in it to flood it, if, you, if you're with me, I will put the filler in the mud puddles first and then flood it. And then when I sand it off, everything should come to a flood. And what I mean by a flood is metal just showing ever so slightly anywhere with all the panels fitting perfect. You can do it. That's how I do it. You can do it. Wow, that was a rough one, baby. I didn't know how I was going to get that all out. But your car is looking good. She's coming, huh? It's coming. We'll let that dry. And then we're on to that 36 grit and that DA. Sanding it to fit together. When we hit the metal, that's the ocean floor, it's over. Do not, we do not want to dig into the ocean floor. It's rough down there. We want it like glass. And that's what we're doing. And also, we're making the panels fit each other. On a car that had a dent, well, let's face it, you would flood the dent and you'd fill that dent in that area. You wouldn't come in and fill the whole door out, <laughs> you know, unless you're building a show car. And what I mean by that, if you have a show car, if you're building a show car, what I'm saying, this door right here right now, you come down to the bottom of the door, if that door is stuck out a little bit, if you were building a show car and you have not hammered that door in, that's the way it fits and all that stuff, you are going to come in here and you are going to fill this part to fit the door to have that perfect thing. You, or you're going to cut apart and do some more metal work, then you're still going to fill it. If you know what I'm trying to tell you. The door comes out all the way, so no, fill, no filler goes on this part or little as possible and the filler goes on the quarter panel so your door let or your door lap lips do not get thick like mine just did when I was talking my lips got thick when you know that the lip is thick its investigation tells you that something has been done to the door and the people that are Houdinis like myself make like to make sure that you cannot see that 